So in life, there's two things that's guaranteed. It's guaranteed that the sun will come up every morning, and then it's guaranteed that you will be on them phones in the help desk. Welcome to Debt Free and IT. I'm your host, Mike. This podcast is for anyone who's looking to get into the IT industry, whether it's for a career change or you're just interested, I think you come to the right place. So today's episode is all about the good old help desk. So the help desk is often the first row for many IT professionals. Some see it as a dead end or even some see it as something they may never get out of. I know definitely when I look back on when I was at the help desk, it was definitely one of the things going across my mind. You know, I was thinking that, okay, if a position ever opens up, then basically I'm stuck here at the help desk. So like I said, the help desk uh, to a lot of people, they may consider it a dead end, you know, or something that is hard to get out of because most of the time at the help desk, you're waiting on a road to open up in another department in your organization. So it's either you're waiting on another road to open up or you're searching outside of your organization for another road to go into. But sometimes, like I said, this help desk, I've seen plenty of people come to the help desk and end up staying at the help desk for plenty of years. And then I've seen those people that come to the help desk and end up pivoting out to something greater. To me, the help desk is that road that builds your foundation. So it helps you with troubleshooting. It gives you the opportunity to actually see how an IT organization works. Then also the help desk for me was when I was able to figure out and then go ahead and create my roadmap for which jobs I wanted to go after after I left the help desk. So working in the help desk, a lot of times for those, like I said, it's your first position coming in. So it actually lets you see how each department works, how each organization works, how things work just in IT in general. And one of the ways I was able to go about creating that roadmap to see which job I would like to go after is basically at this help desk role, I would have to send issues to each IT department. Therefore, I was able to see what kind of issues each department was getting and which helped me decide which department or position I could see myself doing. So if it was certain positions where I would send them issues, if I knew that, dang, I got to call this, this department every morning at 3 a.m., you know, a lot of times that, that came into consideration, you know, okay, what if that was me being called at 3 a.m.? So working this help desk, I was able to see what each department does, and then also that helped me to make my decision on, okay, which one of these can I see myself doing? I know for me, it narrowed down to desktop desktop support, or some people may call it technical support, and then networking. So those were my top two positions, and those were the ones that, from working at the help desk, helped me to see that, okay, I could see myself in one of these positions, and I think I would like it. So today, I'm going to break down the transferable skills you gain from the help desk, as well as some of the jobs I think the help desk prepares you for. So let's get to it. So first things first, when it comes to the skills you gain in the help desk, the first skill, which I think is a very important skill, is those communication skills. Because let's face it, in most help desk roles, you're guaranteed to be on those phones. So in life, there's two things that's guaranteed. It's guaranteed that the sun will come up every morning, and then it's guaranteed that you will be on them phones in the help desk. So at the help desk, this is where you learn to communicate with different users or different customers or other employees in your organization, because most of the time, these are the people that's calling in. So you learn to communicate with those that may not be computer savvy. Also, you learn to complete, uh, you learn to communicate with those that may be computer savvy, but may not be as technical as you. And then also you learn to communicate with those that know it all, because trust me, you will have some people that call in and everything you try to troubleshoot, they already done did it or they already know it or either they're trying to tell you how to troubleshoot it. So you get your communication skills up here at the help desk. So you think about it, most help desk professionals, they're probably taking in over 50 to 100 calls per shift. So within those 50, 100 calls, each call is going to be different. Some of them are going to be easy. Some of them are going to take longer than usual. I have them been on the phone before with a customer for a couple of hours. So all of this is going to help to build up those communication skills. So the next skill you gain is basically this is where you get familiar with ticketing systems. So most organizations are most places that have issues or most places that have an IT department, 
you're guaranteed to have some sort of ticketing system. I know that you have a service now. It's a popular one. Uh, there's also plenty of others, but at this help desk, this is when you get real familiar with that ticketing system because usually whenever you take a call, you got to log it as a ticket. That way, if it's something that you need to send to another team, you're able to send it to another team and they can see what all you have done to try to resolve this issue from within your ticket. So at the help desk, you're inside of that ticketing system on a daily basis. So this is something you come, you become real familiar with, with how this ticketing system works, which helps you when after you leave the help desk, because then after you leave the help desk, I know for me, when I left the help desk and I ended up in networking, I was able to clearly spot out issues that wasn't networking issues or issues that didn't belong to the networking team. Because I had worked that help desk role and I saw those issues before and I knew what team resolved those issues. So if somebody sent a, if someone from the help desk sent an issue to the networking team, I could look at it and say, oh, that's something that we used to take care of in tech support. So I could call up somebody from tech support or I could just reassign that ticket to someone in tech support or to the tech support group. But I wouldn't have learned all of that if I hadn't started out at that help desk. And at that help desk, like I said, I got real familiar with what team get what type of issues. And that way it helped me to send those tickets to those teams. So it all boils they boil down to me working at the help desk, getting familiar with the ticketing system, and also getting familiar with what each department does. So the last skill is that at this help desk role, you gain exposure to the software and the applications that's used by your organization. So basically when users are calling in, most of the time they're calling in because they have an issue with a certain application or something is going on with their PC or something is going on on the network. So at the help desk, you're the first line of defense. So if someone has an issue with an application, a lot of times you may have a knowledge base that you can go in, research that application, research that issue. And then in that knowledge base, it may also tell you what the fix to that issue is. So you get real familiar with every piece of application or each application that your organization has, which in turn helps you out because if I know that I want to go on this server team and I see that this application belongs to the server team, I can get real familiar with that application, learn it inside and out, learn how to troubleshoot it. That way, if something comes available on that server team, I can apply for it. And now I do have some skills that I can transfer from the help desk over to that server team because I'm familiar with the applications that they have or maybe even some servers that they manage that I may have to go in and change some settings or something like that if you have the access to or some things that you may not have access to but you're able to resolve and then send it on to that server team to let them know that this is what I did to resolve that issue. That way you become on that team's radar because they know that, oh, this person, every time he gets a ticket, he's able to resolve it and you let them see it because you're copying them on it, that you're already resolving issues that would have been an issue of theirs, but you was able to resolve that issue without having to send it on to them. Quick pause. I'd like to introduce you to the Log Files. The Log Files is a weekly newsletter that help you start your IT career with practical advice and tips powered by yours truly. We launched it in the beginning of the year. It's packed with actionable advice, resources, and insights to kickstart your IT journey. The link is in the description as well as pinned in the comments. So don't miss out. Now back to the episode. So the next thing I want to look at is some of the top jobs to look for when you're leaving the help desk or when you're trying to move up from the help desk. So the first job is none other than networking. So this is where you want to look for those network admin, network technician positions because in a networking, from a networking standpoint, those are going to be the entry level networking roles. So I'm not saying it's the entry level IT roles, but it's the entry level role to get into networking. So coming from the help desk, like I said, you've already kind of went through doing some troubleshooting, some basic network troubleshooting. So a lot of times it's, it's not uncommon to see someone come from a help desk role for a couple of months or a couple of years and then go to a networking role. And one of the things I think that can help prepare someone to make this jump or to make this transition is, for one thing, if you're making it from within the organization you was at the help desk at, a lot of times you got the experience of knowing that organization. So you know your way around that organization. So it won't be no issue for you to learn where the networking closets is at. 
So that uh, you have a lot going for you coming from the help desk, moving up from within. And like I said, with these networking roles, one one of the things, another thing I would look at or another thing I would try to pursue is that CCNA certification. So like I said, the CCNA is going to prepare you for any of these roles. And like I said, it, it makes a good transition going from that help desk to that networking role, especially when you're going from the same organization, because you already kind of know some, know some things about that organization. You know where things is located. You know where the buildings is at. But like I said, that CCNA, I think it'll make it happen uh, to make this transition a much, much smoother. So you can't get it without this certification. I've seen places where, you know, they move you up and then you have to get the certification within a year. All of that is going to greatly depend on the organization. So the next role that the help desk prepares you for, this is an application analyst or an application engineer, depending on what the organization calls it. I'm used to calling it application analyst or app, apps analyst. A lot of times in this position is basically you're supporting the applications that your company uses. So often resort back to healthcare. So at healthcare, a lot of times, you know, one system that's big in healthcare is uh, Epic. So, you know, you have where most hospital systems, they're using Epic. So to support those Epic systems or the different uh, caveats in Epic, you have Epic analysts, uh, which would be also an application analyst, depending on where you at. So like I said, the application analysts, they support the applications that the company uses. And most of the time, this person is usually somewhat of a, a go-between. So basically, if the user is having an issue on the floor, they have an analyst that they report that issue to, and then the analyst tries to fix that issue. So the analyst may have to pull in other resources from the IT department to fix that issue. Let's say that if it's an application on a server, so the analyst may be responsible for making sure it's not that application on that server. And then if they decide that, okay, there's something going on with the server itself, then they may have to pull in a server resource. So at this position, like I said, you you kind of being the, the go-between from the users on the floor and the other departments within the IT or within your IT organization. But like I said, this is one of the roles where I've seen plenty of people come from a help desk and move up to an analyst position. Uh, but like I said, because at help desk, you're working with those applications also. You're not going in deep detail with those applications because if it's something out of the basic troubleshooting, you're sending it to this apps analyst. So application analyst roles, this is something that I would look at coming from a help desk or coming from anything uh, lower than this apps role, like a help desk or maybe even desktop would be a good transition to go to apps analyst. So the next position that the help desk prepares you for is the system admin. So basically, these roles usually maintain the server environment. You know, sometimes that server environment may be virtualized or you may still have some physical servers on your network. But a lot of times the server admin, they're responsible for that server infrastructure, or that server environment. So this is where like I said, you could be building servers, troubleshooting servers, um, anything that has to do with a server, usually it falls up under this group. Also, Active Directory and things like that fall up under this group also, or Microsoft or Office 365. A lot of time that goes to the server group. So like I said, this server group, it goes in the same order as with networking as to the tiered jobs where you have a server admin, which would usually be the first level. Then from there, you may have a server engineer. Then it goes to a server senior engineer and so forth. So like I said, different organizations may call it different things, but it kind of goes in those, even, even at any organization, it's still going to go at those levels. But like I said, this is a good position coming from the help desk. I've seen plenty of people make this transition also, especially coming from desktop too. So a lot of times desktop, if you think about it, at that desktop position, you're troubleshooting with smaller PCs, then you move to that server position and you're troubleshooting servers. So in a way, that's a good natural transition also, where a lot of times if someone works desktop for a couple of years, a lot of times they're well prepared to move to the server admin to where they start supporting the server environment. So some of the certifications that could help you out in this transition, uh, a lot of your virtualization certs. I know VMware used to be uh, uh, vSphere. Used to be one of the big certs, uh, some Linux certs. 
also uh, any kind of cloud search. So all of this could help you out to get you into this server admin position. And then the last position I want to point out that working at the help desk prepares you for is a lot of your security positions. So it's not, not uncommon to see someone go from help desk to a security analyst or a security admin. So a lot of times, like I said, this is a natural transition also because you already know the organization. You're already familiar with a lot of the applications. It's just about making that transition to this security team. A lot of times the certification that can help you make that transition for to the, from help desk to security would definitely be the security plus. Like I said, that's usually the first certification for security that most people go after. Of. And like I said, it help, it's, it's worth its weight. You know, saying this is um, a well-respected certification. Then from there, you know, I would always say that if you, once you get there, you get that certification, you get in on that security team. If you decide that you want to pivot to something else in security, that's when you start looking at or reaching out or doing your research on those certifications. So if you get to, to the security team and you decide you want to manage firewalls, this is where you may start going down that Palo Alto route or that Fortinet route to start researching or learning some things about some firewalls. But coming from the help desk, like I said, it was, will prepare you to make this transition from help desk to cybersecurity. So as you can see, the help desk opens up a lot of doors for you. One of the main goals while you're working the help desk is to figure out what route or what position you can see yourself doing and then starting to prepare for when a, a role becomes available or when one of those jobs become available or if your company expands and some more roles become available, you want to already be prepared for it because that way when that opening comes, you're already prepared. If there's a certification you need, you already have that certification. And then an uh, added benefit of being in the same organization as the position you're trying to move up to is something that you hear me talk about sometimes called job shadowing. This is basically where you reach out to the manager of that department and tell them that you're interested and you want to know if you could shadow to see what they do in a on a typical day. So a lot of times, like I said, you could you would have to do it on a day or a day when you're not working your regular shift. But basically, you come in and you shadow with someone in that department or you shadow with multiple people in that department and you kind of get a gist of what they do on a daily basis. And sometimes while you're shattering, you may even get a chance to get your hands dirty by help resolving some issues or help troubleshooting some issues. That way, when that position becomes available and you've been shadowing for months with this department, a lot of times it's a no brainer. They're going to automatically go ahead and hire you because you already kind of have the training for it because you've been shadowing with them. You kind of know the aspects of the job. They just have to train you a little bit more. So, like I said, this is one of those things coming from the help desk that I think uh, helps out folks a lot because like I said, you're able to maneuver around, you're able to learn the organization. And then like I said, if you're able to job shadow, a lot of times that's a game changer. So if you're currently at the help desk, let me know in the comments, what's your next move or what's the next position you're going for. And also let me know if there's any certifications that you need to get in order to get that position. So that brings me to the end of this episode. Hopefully you found some value in this episode. If you're watching on YouTube, please like and subscribe. If you're on Instagram, TikTok, or Facebook, you can follow me at Debt Free and IT. If you have any questions, you can email me at debtfreeandit at gmail.com or you can visit me at debtfreeandit with Mike.com. Other than that, I'll see you next week. Peace.